Hey everyone, it's Andy from Handlebar Jack. Today, we are going to talk about e-bike batteries. The battery is just one part of the e-bike's electrical system. In this video, we are mainly going to talk about the battery and the controller. I'm going to have a whole separate video just talking about e-bike motors. When it comes to e-bike batteries, you often see different voltage ratings like 36, 48, 52, or even 72 volts. What does this mean and how does it affect your e-bike's performance? A 36 volt e-bike battery is one of the most common types of batteries found in entry level and mid-range e-bikes. It provides enough power to give a bike a decent speed and range. A 48 volt battery is a step up from a 36 and provides more power and speed and it's often used in higher end e-bikes. A 52 volt battery provides even more power and speed and then on the very extreme end you have a 72 volt battery but those are less commercially available and more in the DIY sector of building e-bikes. While a 52 or 72 volt battery provides more power and speed it also requires a compatible motor and controller to handle that extra power which is why you see these types of batteries and motors on more expensive e-bikes. E-bike batteries come in all shapes and sizes. Some look like this, some are a little bit bigger like this, and some are really big like this one. Now, I bet you're asking yourself, Andy, how is this going to help me choose an e-bike? Well, that's what I'm going to help you with today. An e-bike battery breaks down into a few simple components. You have this, which is a single battery. The standard size lithium ion battery is the 18650. Nerd fact, 18 refers to 18 millimeters in diameter, and 65 refers to 65 millimeters in length, and zero is that it's a cylindrical shape. And a bunch of different companies make them. Panasonic, LG, Samsung, Sony, just to name a few. Lower cost battery packs might be using no name generic brand cells. These battery packs might be good, but the larger battery manufacturers have higher quality control procedures in place to guarantee the quality of the cells. And in my book, it's always better to get a battery pack with name brand cells. You take a bunch of these batteries and you squish them together and do a bunch of fancy electrical stuff and you attach a circuit board called a battery management system and you've got your battery. In order to make an informed choice when you're buying an e-bike, you really need to understand what a battery is and what amps and volts mean in relationship to your e-bike battery. Now don't worry, I'm not going to test you after this, just rewind the video and watch it again and again and again. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, let's get back to amps and volts. Amps, or in our case amp hours, is what you see on the stickers of e-bike batteries. This refers to the amount of energy that the battery can deliver over time. A higher amp hour rating will allow the bike to go further on a single charge. Next is voltage. A higher voltage battery will generally provide more power to the motor resulting in a faster and more responsive ride. You take amps times volts, and that equals watts, and that's what you need to power your e-bike motor. To explain it a different way, imagine your e-bike battery is like a water tank. Amp hours is the amount of water this tank can hold. The higher amp hour rating, or the more water or electrical charge the battery can hold, the longer it will take before it needs to be refilled or recharged. Voltage, on the other hand, measures the electrical charge similar to water pressure like in a garden hose. The higher the voltage, the more pressure there is and the more power that can be delivered to the motor. So for an example, an e-bike with a 72 volt battery will be quicker and more responsive than an e-bike with a 36 volt battery. Now there are a few other things in an e-bike battery system that aren't really consumer facing. In the battery, you have something called a BMS or battery management system. This just monitors the charge, voltage, and temperature of the battery. The BMS communicates with the controller. The controller is what gets information from your LCD panel on your handlebars and your pedals or throttle, and then the controller sends power from the battery to the motor. The controller becomes very important when you're building an e-bike from the ground up, and it's critical for your battery and controller to be rated the same voltage. But normally, the BMS and the controller isn't something you have to worry about when purchasing an e-bike. 
Because e-bike batteries are lithium ion batteries, you don't want to drain them completely to zero. Draining them all the way or below 10% can also reduce the lifespan of your battery. And when you're not using your e-bike, you should remove the battery from the bike and store the battery in a cool, dry place. The ideal temperature for storage is between 68 and 75 degrees. You also want to keep your battery charged. It's best to keep the battery charged between 20 to 80 percent capacity. And when you're storing your battery for an extended period of time, it's pretty important to charge it every few months. This can help prevent the battery from just discharging completely and losing its capacity. Okay, let's wrap things up. Amp hours and e-bike batteries is your total capacity and how long your battery can last. And of course, this varies on the power level and how hard you ride. Voltage determines how powerful or responsive your e-bike is. Just remember, a higher voltage battery might not feel right for you. So it's best to test out different bikes with different battery voltages to see how they feel. And to be honest, there really isn't a wrong decision here. Now that you understand e-bike batteries a bit more, you can go out and make a much more informed purchase. Let me know if you found this video helpful, and if you have any questions or ideas for future videos, just leave them in the comments below. We'll see you next time. In this video, we're mainly going to talk about the battery and the controller, and the giant plane taking off. Don't live next to an airport and try and film YouTube stuff.